now we're getting to the meat and potatoes of of calculus one and what I mean by that is we're gonna start using the derivative we've been looking at theorems and we've spent a lot of time actually finding a derivative taking derivatives of different functions and now we're gonna use it so one way we can use it is to determine whether a function is increasing which means it's moving up whether it's constant which just means it's it's horizontal it's straight just like a constant it's not moving up or down or if it's decreasing so that hopefully that's a pretty easy concept when we when x moves from left to right so x is always moving in this direction if the function is moving up it's increasing if it's moving down it's decreasing and if it's if it's uh constant then it's constant if it's if it's horizontal if it's not moving up or down then it's constant okay so in terms of the derivative what does this mean well this should look familiar. If, it, if the function is increasing, the derivative is positive, right? Positive slope. All these have positive slope. If the function is, is decreasing, then the derivative is negative. And if it's constant, then the derivative is zero. So we're just saying the same thing that we've been saying over again. We're just labeling it now. So let me actually write those words out just so you see them one time. So increasing over here, this is constant. And then finally we we come to de decreasing. Okay. So we can use this to to figure out when a function is, is increasing and decreasing and and we can use it to find maximum and minimum points too. If we have a critical number now we can find out for sure if it's a maximum or a minimum. Because we can look and see and see if it's in, if the if we find a critical number so here's our critical number c all we know is that that's a critical number if we know to the left of the critical number the function's increasing and to the right it's decreasing then we know it's a maximum if we know to the left it's decreasing and to the right it's increasing well then it's a minimum so let's let's use all of that what i just said so so let's let's do that so find the intervals on which, and then I'm going to write a function, is increasing and decreasing. Okay, so let's, let's give our function, let's say it's x cubed minus 3x plus 10. Okay, maybe I should make this, I'm going to make this 4x, or why don't I make it 9x? Okay, all right, so what are we going to do? Well, let's, first of all, let's take the derivative, because we know that the derivative is going to help us find the slope of the function, and, and we can use that. So, taking the derivative, 3x squared minus... 9x. Oh, I should have thought ahead. I didn't want to do 9. I wanted to do. What did I want to do? I wanted to do. Let's not call that 9x. Let's call it. I mean, I shouldn't have to make the numbers easy for us, but I'm going to anyways. So let's make this 27x. Uh, and then this is just, oops, no, that's that's all right. Then this is not an x. This is just minus 27 because we took the derivative. Okay, sorry for the holdup. Um, and now we can find the critical numbers of this function pretty easily. We just factor out a 3, and we're left with x squared minus 9. We set that equal to 0. And, of course, our critical numbers are x equals negative 3 and 3. So hopefully that, that part is second nature to you by now. Okay, now we can use something called the first derivative test. And what we're going to do is we're going to test the interval to the left of the first critical number, the interval between the two critical numbers, and then the interval to the right of the, 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 sec the second critical number. So 
what what am I saying here? I'm gonna make a table. And let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, okay. So this is gonna be negative infinity to three. Oh sorry, to negative three. We're gonna test a number in there to see what, what happens. And then we're gonna test from negative three to three. And then we're going to test from uh, 3 to infinity. And why are we only testing these three intervals? Because a function c can't change from increasing to decreasing without there being a critical number. Right? Because the only way it can do that is if, uh, or, or sorry, or an asymptote for that matter, but there's no asymptotes to this graph, so vertical asymptotes, or horizontal for that matter. So the function, to go from increasing to decreasing, as long as the function's continuous, it can only do it in two ways. It can have a sharp turn, in which case there's a critical number, or it can have a, a smooth turn, in which case we know there's a critical number. So that's the only way the function can go from positive slope to negative slope, or increasing to decreasing. So for it to change from increasing to decreasing, it has to happen at a critical number. And since there's only two critical numbers, we, we know this only is going to happen at most twice. Okay, so now what are we going to do? Well, let's take, let's, let's take the sine of f prime of x. So all we need to know is the sine of this. We don't even need to know if it's, if it's uh, what, what the value is. We just need to know the sine. So let's test, let's test 4. So if we test 4, so your 4 is our test value. So I'm just going to write that in parentheses. And if we plug 4 into the derivative, we're going to get 4 squared, which is 16, times 3, which is 48. And 48 minus 27 is positive. OK, then from negative 3 to 3, well, let's pick an easy number. Let's pick 0. And if we test 0, then we are going to get 0 minus 27, which of course is negative. And then we're going to test uh, a new value. So let's test positive 4. We know we're going to get the same answer because positive 4 squared is 16 times 3, which is 48 minus 27. Well, this is positive. So all we need to know is the sign. We don't even need to know the value. Now, that's going to tell us something important. It's going to tell us if this is increasing. So the derivative was positive, that means on this interval we the, the function is increasing. Here the derivative was negative, so on this interval the function is decreasing. And here the derivative is positive, so again the function is increasing. So we answered the questions. From negative infinity to, to negative 3, the function's increasing. From negative 3 to 3, the function's decreasing. And from 3 to infinity, the function is increasing. And these are open intervals because at negative 3, the function is actually constant. And at positive 3, the function is constant, right? We already figured out the, the derivative at those points is equal to 0, which means, that, of course, the, the function is constant at that one point. So we're not including negative 3 and 3. So these are open intervals, in case you were wondering about that. Okay, and that's it. And now we know for certain now that negative 3 is a maximum because we went from increasing all the way up to negative 3, and then we got to negative 3, and then to the right of negative 3 we were decreasing and then this and then we know that 3 is a minimum so this was negative 3 here because to the left of negative or to the left of positive 3 sorry we're decreasing and to the right of positive 3 we're increasing so if this is 3 here we have a minimum okay so that's it we'll see you in the next video